G'day church family and the visitors to the Rockhampton Baptist uh, devotional channel. It's good to be here, Pastor Mark here again. Today's devotion, you know how I said last week that I was going to start something new? Well, I had one word left in me. As they say, little boys that tell sort of lies grow up to be sort of weather forecasters. Well, maybe this is the case here today. That's just a little joke for all those other pastors out there that tune in. The word for, for this week is Trinity, meaning three in one. In very simple terms, it means three in one. And it's a theological word, not actually found in the Bible, but implied. In other ways, we might say, uh, we might refer to God as the, um, no, the triune God. We often refer to the members and the persons of the Godhead. Pretty much the same idea. One of my favourite Bible references that implies this whole sort of idea of uh, one God but three persons goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And it says, And then God, singular, said, Let us, plural, make mankind in our plural image. So that's where we get this real sense of God being one, but there being other members of the Godhead. So who are the persons in the Godhead? Now, this is not like a theological lecture. It's just a brief overview today. Who are the persons in the Trinity? Well, first is God the Father, and from whom we acknowledge that all life and existence flows. And then we have God the Son, Jesus Christ. He's Emmanuel, God with us, the one who became flesh, the one that paid for our sin, so that we could have eternal life. He is also the creator. He's the one that sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven. He's the promised word of God. He's the lion and the lamb. And he is the one that will return to fully consummate the kingdom of God. And the third person is God the Holy Spirit. He, he's the comforter. The paraclete is the Greek word for that. He is the one that was promised by Jesus. The one that was, uh, that was promised that would dwell in us as Christians and equip us and empower us for service. He, he is that one who would transform us and fit us for all eternity. He is a guarantee, a down posit of an eternal hope that we have. So we have this one God and three very distinct persons. It's not one God with three personalities because that implies some form of a divine um, the schizophrenia and if we said that we'd probably be run out of town. Over the ages, um, um, people have struggled to grasp this whole idea of one God but three persons. And so there's been some attempts that have been made to illustrate this. Over the years, I've heard about water. Water exists in the three states. You know, it's a liquid. It can be a solid. It can be a vapour. So it can be steam, ice, or a fluid. Then I've heard the egg one where, you know, you've got the yolk and you've got the white. And then you've got the shell around about it. So it's one egg, but three parts. Recent times, I've sort of tended to think more about... Um, like a piano, um, not a keyboard. So you've got, got the middle C, so you press middle C. But an octave higher, you've got another C. And an octave lower, you've got another C. So they're all one note C, but three distinct like the keys on the keyboard. But the other day, I had to go out into the garage to look for some paint. Now, for those of you that know me very well, Paint and I do not have a very good relationship. In fact, I, I will do many other terrible things before I think about painting, but I was desperate. So I go out and I, I'm able to grab this can of paint and I look at it and I thought, three in one. And this is what got me thinking about, about the Trinity. So it's a three, a three in one. Yeah. Okay, you pop the top on the paint, you look in, it's white paint. That's all it is. But supposedly it's got three distinct bits about it. There's a primer, 
there's a sealer, there's an undercoat. So where you'd normally have to buy three paints to do the one job, this is three in one. This is sort of becoming like a paint, paint advertisement, isn't it? But I think we can get hung up about trying to get a picture about the Trinity. When really we should be accepting that our God, our God is one, and at the same time, three persons in perfect harmony, like a perfect relationship, perfect balance. People ask me, well, how can you believe in this Trinity? It doesn't make sense. Well, I can, I can believe in a three-in-one paint. I can you know, believe in a three-in-one one God. Seriously, the concept of one God and three persons makes perfectly good sense to me, especially when you get a glimpse of God's nature and God's character and who God is. He is who he is. God is God and God is three in one. And I accept that. I have no problems accepting that at all. This is just one of the divine, well, one of many, many divine yards mysteries of God. To quote a film, God is mysterious. Live with it. And that's what we do. Let's pray. Our glorious Lord, our glorious God, we thank you that you are who you are. Lord, we think about history, we think about, Lord, creation, we think about the, Lord, the salvation that we have in Jesus. We th think of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we thank you that we have this beautiful triune God, one God and three persons. And every day, Lord, we see your great hand, Lord, upon our lives and working in our lives too. We just pray, Lord, your blessing that we would just accept this, that, Lord, that we don't have to understand it, but this is truth, and, Lord, you are truth. So, Lord, I just pray your blessing over each and every one this day, and I thank you for this time now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, read your Bibles and pray. It's always good, and that's where we really get to grasp the nature and the character of God. I'd encourage you to listen to God and when he speaks, and he does, he speaks all the time to us, that little still voice or in the word of God. Trust him and obey. Take every opportunity on your front lines to bless other people and we'll see you real soon.